the sum time today of, of handling many worries and many things that we don't know. But God is here with his grace and mercy. So we begin with our first hymn, hymn 728, verses 1 through 4. Please rise. in the front part of your hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, Call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We read together the intro found in our worship folder on page 3. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds. He prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the beasts their food, and to the young raven, and to the young ravens that cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor is his pleasure in the legs of a man. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, 
and those who hope in his steadfast love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. together the collect of the day found at the top of page four. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is by your grace that we live as one people who offer acceptable service. Grant that we may walk by faith and not by sight in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir, but your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward the heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. The epistles from Hebrews chapter 11. 
Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it, the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she was considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven, and as many as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear they are seeking a homeland. They have been thinking of that land from which they had got out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for reading the Holy Gospel. about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn. Yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow thrown, is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. 
For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money banks that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess together our Christian faith using the Apostles' Creed on page 207. We confess. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 750, verses 1 through 4.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our, our sermon text for today is the gospel lesson we read just a few minutes ago from Luke chapter 12. This follows right on the heels of what we had last week in Luke chapter 12, just right before it. So if you missed that, you got to go home and watch the video. No. Um, uh, but... Uh, that, that was the story of the parable of the rich fool who wanted to say, I have, I'll just build bigger barns and live with all of my life, but he had no life in God. And, and so uh, the question there at the end was, what will all of this avail you if you uh, have no life with God? And so Jesus picks up today, therefore, and you know, whenever we start a lesson with, therefore, we have to remind ourselves what we just did. So there we are. Therefore, Jesus says, I tell you, do not be anxious. Do not fear. Do not worry. Right? These are the three things that come through this. Uh, do not be anxious about this life, about your life. What the, what the food's going to be. What the, the body's going to be. What, 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 what the recession's going to be. Right? And he says, don't worry. Do not have any anxiety or fear. If I've heard right, I've heard that the incidents have reported uh, anxiety among people since COVID began has skyrocketed. I understand that everything changed, and we told us ourselves that we had to be of everything that just changed. We had to be worried that the person who was within six feet of us had eight diseases, right? We had... <laughs> To be worried that something was in the air, something was on the doorknob that you just touched. We had to be worried about many things. And now, as we're coming through that, now we've got economic things we can think about. We have you know, uh, geopolitical situations that we can think about and worry about. We have so many things. And Jesus says, hmm, I'm not worried. Uh, but he tells us why. He tells us why. Don't worry about these things. Life is more than just the food. Life is more than just the body. Chasing after the worldly things, there's more than that. So Jesus sets up these two ridiculous, silly examples. And I think it's lovely because he could have posed something that maybe was a little bit more likely to happen. But he gives us something completely silly to think about. He says, consider the ravens. You know, how hard are they working on their 401k? Right? Uh, you know, how hard are they doing things? He says, consider the ravens. They don't work. They don't sow. They don't plant seeds. They just take whatever comes along. Right? They're kind of the roadkill, kind of the carrion eater kind of people. Right? I was driving along uh, 674 a couple years ago and coming into town from the, you know, from 301, the, the road just on the wires, there were turkey vultures. Just leaning down on me. They, it was almost like they were saying, hey, Kevin, one day it's you. <laughs> we got you. We'll be here for you. Uh, <laughs> consider the ravens. How hard are they working? And he says they don't sow their, or reap. They're not planting things. They're taking the food that comes to them, right? They don't do these things, and yet God still feeds them, right? Consider this, he says. You know, it's almost like he sets up this silly example. They're not running around going, my to-do list, my to-do list, right? If I don't get it all done, something will be wrong. They don't work at it. Work, food shows up, and they'll eat the food. And God takes care of them. But we do the opposite, don't we? Now, we think ahead and we try to say some long-range planning might be helpful for us as humans. And God even commends a bit of that in the scriptures to think ahead and plan and uh, store food from the harvest for the hard times and things like that. But then we add to that. We add worry to it. We add anxiety to it. We add, ang we add fear to it. We worry the things won't get done. We worry that I don't have what it takes for the next thing that's going to happen. We worry that those other people responsible for all of their jobs and responsibilities, they won't succeed, and it'll come crashing down on us, right? We worry about everything we can think of if we try to. Possessions, 
We cling to situations. We cling to pieces of paper that came in the mail and say, what now? There are some things that obviously cause us a great amount of concern. But Jesus is wanting to say here, God has this. God has this. He's got this thing taken care of. He says, you're, you're trying to figure out tomorrow. You're trying real hard to figure out tomorrow. Um, it's okay, because God has today and tomorrow in his hands. And don't worry, because God has even figured out the eternal tomorrow that maybe you haven't even thought of yet. God has you in his hands. So consider the ravens. Are they working very hard? No. Does God put before them everything they need? Yeah. Is God going to take care of them? Yes. So is God going to take care of you? Yes. Ridiculous image number two. Consider the lilies. What? Right? I, these disciples must be going, he's just making up these crazy examples. Where is he getting all of this? Consider the lilies of the field. They haven't done a thing to put on any clothes, and yet they're beautiful, aren't they? says, you know, Solomon, wrapped in all of his splendor, in all of his kingly robes, never looked as good as a lily that God made in the field. That's what he's kind of saying here. They don't work. They don't crimp and curl. They don't pump iron to have the right figure. But they're beautiful just the way God made them to be. They don't have to look any different. And we say, those flowers are beautiful. Now, you know, if you know me, you know me and flowers. I, I, have, I love poinsettias and I love lilies, but that's kind of a professional thing. You know, the Christmas poinsettias and the, the Easter lilies. Uh, but I come to appreciate the beauty that comes with them every time. But then the rest for me, you know, if, if it grows, it mows, right? <laughs> uh, but no, he says, look at nature. And see that God has made even nature beautiful. They nature hasn't done a thing to make itself beautiful. But God has made it beautiful. We worry, you know, what clothes shall I wear? Do I have the right clothes for the right occasion? And sometimes we want to try to look our best in the right occasion. But he says God made the world just this beautiful world. And consider the lilies, they're like grass. And the grass comes today and is thrown into the fire, gets mown down tomorrow. And God even decided to take something so transitory, so impermanent, and take the time to give it beauty. Even beauty for just a day. So, God cares, he's saying. God cares. We worry, but God looks at you and says, you're more than a raven. <laughs> you're more than a bird. You're more than a flower and a lily. You're a child of God. You are his crowning creation, humanity. And you are someone that he has taken the time to call to faith, to call to the word of God, to call to the baptismal font, and to call to the altar where the Lord's Supper is given. You are someone he has called to gather to him and into his grace and into his mercy. And we want to say, but is it all going to work out? We struggle with our worries at times. And God, when he says, do not worry, he says, I know you do. But I want you to tell you, I want to tell you that in Jesus, it's all covered. It's all taken care of. When we worry, God tells us, I've got this. God's got this. When we worry, it's almost as if we're trying to say, is God really king at all anymore, ever? Did Jesus really rise from the dead? If we worry, we wonder, is anybody really still in control of this place, or is it all just crashing? And God says, I have this. I have this. And Jesus says, do not seek after these things. Everybody does that. But seek first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will be added to you as well. The kingdom, he says, the kingdom of God. He says, have no fear, little flock. It is God's good pleasure to give you not just grass, not just birds, not just something to eat or something to wear, but to give you the whole kingdom. 
We say that kingdom come. We say that kingdom come to us. And, and Jesus says, and God's going to do it. It is his good pleasure, he says. So do not fear. It is his good pleasure to give you this kingdom, this kingdom of God. And Romans will say the kingdom of God is not even just about food and clothing and, and, what, and eating and drinking. But the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. Thy kingdom come, O oh Lord. Bring me even that thing that is righteousness, peace, and joy. Thy kingdom come, O oh Lord. And we hear even the thief on the cross say, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. It's as if he's praying, thy kingdom come. Let that kingdom of yours remember me. Welcome me, Lord, with mercy and grace into your kingdom. Today. You will be with me. Jesus has even said in the Gospels, Today the kingdom of God is in your midst, is among you. What does this kingdom of God look like? When we're told to seek first his kingdom, to seek first his righteousness and peace and joy, well, it kind of looks like coming to church, doesn't it? Coming to the place where Jesus is found. Coming to the place where Christ is king. Coming to the place where his reign and his rule is over us in grace and mercy. Coming to the place where God's people, the people of the kingdom, are there for each other as well. Looking after our own needs for each other. Coming to the place where we hear that he shall reign forever and ever. He is the king. And this kingdom where Christ is king, where Christ is looking out for you, where Christ has all of your daily needs and your eternal tomorrow, your eternal salvation in his hands, in his gracious and merciful hands, that is looking after the kingdom. All of these other things, God loves you and cares for you and will make sure that you have what you need. You simply, if you have a need, ask God's people. We would love to help each other with you. We would never turn our back on God's people. We're here for each other. Because God's here in Christ for us. And God's here in Christ for us. And through each of us, we can serve one another. The way God would say, look after that little sheep. Make sure they have what they need. And they will look after you, little sheep. God's given you the whole kingdom and each other. You're more than a flower. You are more than a bird eating roadkill. You are a child of God. And he has every word he answered. Every anxiety is still. Every fear is covered. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give thanks for your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us, and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors and to all people, to those who hold office in your church, that by their devoted service, faith may abound and your kingdom increase. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Yeah. In your uh, mercy, O oh Lord, we pray that you would preserve our nation in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land. 
Help them to serve this people according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let your blessing remain upon the sea time and harvest, O Lord, upon commerce and industry, leisure and rest, the arts and culture of our people. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and be with all who put their hands to any useful task. Give them the just rewards for their labor and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith and have mercy on those to whom death draws near. Bring consolation to those in sorrow and grant to all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, Grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns to you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated now as we receive the offering. <laughs> that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation. For you have had mercy on us, and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment, you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy, you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross, and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
His grace. Amen. God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. Our closing hymn is hymn number 809.
Again, good morning and welcome to Christ the King Lutheran Church. Uh, it's a pleasure to have everyone here, especially uh, a number of visitors that are here today. It's a pleasure to meet you and, and see you. Um, I'd like to direct your attention to the announcement pages in the back. Uh, just very quickly, one is uh, some of these things are the normal things. And one of the things that I have hardly ever mentioned is the challenge memory verse uh, each week. Uh, actually, this started during the, the whole lockdown, during the, you know, plague hysteria. I like making fun of it. Um, but when we were, you know, when we had nothing to do those first few weeks except sit there, we found out that more people wanted to binge watch worship. <laughs> um, and that was funny. And, and uh, also more people were reading their Bible because we were all stuck inside. And, and so the Senate said, you guys could take time memorizing Bible verses. And so this has gone on ever since then. So if, if that's a challenge for you, I, I dare you to take that challenge and try to uh, see some of these verses that they uh, uh, encourage us to read. So I try to put that in there every week. The youth confirmation uh, announcement, I've changed it. So now we have a meeting planned for the end of this month on the 28th. And if all goes well, then we will start uh, youth confirmation instruction on uh, September 11th. Uh, September 11th also we'll have more uh, other things to announce as well coming up in the next couple of weeks on that uh, everything else should be self-explanatory um, are there any other announcements at this time any comments <laughs> I gave you a chance every week all right um, I'd also um, after we did, uh, dismiss and whatever I'd, I'd like to ask one of the Wednesday warriors one of the fix-it guys uh, to talk to me I got a, a favor to ask so all right uh, anyone else we invite you to stay for the, the goodies, but also for the company of one another. God's blessings on your day and your week.